Welcome back to my YouTube channel, The Inverted Fullback. Um, I've not made a video for a while, so apologies for that. Um, just been incredibly busy coaching um, pretty much every day of the week. Um, but today I've decided by popular demand to do a little bit of a video on a team that's very much flavour of the month at the moment, which is Napoli. Um, they're absolutely thriving in Serie A at the moment, currently top of the league with sort of, I think, eight, nine wins and one draw. Doing very well in Europe. Pep described them as the best build-up side in the world the other day. And they're quite innovative. innovative. And they're looking to take football to the next level more so from a psychological point of view than anything else. And so I'm going to review some of their build-up play and try and break that down for you to give you a better understanding. As always, tick like in the and leave any comments in the in the box below. Please feel free to subscribe and share the video, get the information out there, as because this is what helps us coaches raise the game to the next level. Okay, so the first key principle at play within the build-up phase, and there's nothing new about this, this is very common and standard amongst a lot of elite sides that want to play out from the back, and that is they try to build up with numerical superiority. So initially, the left um, fullback is in there creating a line of three. So that, at this moment in time, is a three versus two. Cagliari are looking to press in a high, engage them on the edge of the box in a 4-4-2. Um, you can see now that the Napoli's holding midfielder is going to drop in between the two strikers to try and cause them a problem of either narrowing them up or to give the cent which would give the centre backs free space, or to become available. This then allows the fullback now to step a line because they don't need any more players within this. Now it doesn't work on this occasion; it, it kind of breaks down. But we're getting a vibe for the principles here that they're drawing the opposition in. They're trying to create space between what we would call lines one and two. They're trying to create spare players here. And if I just pause the play here at this particular moment, you can see Cagliari now have been drawn into a more 4-3-3 type formation, which is why the fullbacks are looking to push on now, because they're creating that 4 versus 3 in the second line. But equally, there's now a lot of space between lines 1 and 2 here, where you can see the number 10, in Hamsik in this example, is actually looking to come in and create superiority of a 4 versus 3 within the build-up phase. Now, as I mentioned, it breaks down on this occasion, and, and that's not important. We're only really here looking at what are the the theory, what is the science, what are the principles behind Napoli's play. Okay, so initially in this phase with the goalkeeper they have a 3v2, but it's 2v2. But they back their centre-backs who are quite good at breaking the first sort of line of pressure. And you can see in this line again we have in the second line a 4 versus 2 essentially. There is a 3 versus 2 overload in around the ball and there's a lot of blind side um, movement and you can see Hamsik here is the number 10 just looking to try and create that sort of two versus one to find the spare player if you like and he's playing on the blind side of the pressing defender here the winger for Cagliari and and this is quite another crucial key principle of of a lot of Napoli's play more so higher up the pitch but they've got a lot of blind side movement for when they're not free so that the the pressing player can't see both the ball and them at the same time and this is what enables them to sort of create bad presses or create spare players in between the lines Now, in Italian football, it's quite famed for its tactical astuteness, its patient defending, that teams don't like to really engage and press high too much or break shape and form. They don't want players pressing recklessly. And so when you see sort of Napoli sort of being able to pass it around quite freely and quite easily, there is an element perhaps of wondering, would they be able to do this against in an English league or against more intense opposition? That being said, this is another key principle of Napoli's play, and it makes it very difficult to actually press them. And that's something that not many people know. Well, as we watch this now, you can see Napoli playing a lot of one and two touch play that seems a little bit needless. They're just passing and moving one and two touch. They're not going anywhere, playing back into the same area. Now, if we show this play again, Maybe it plays on the Italian style of not wanting to break shape and not really want to engage in bad areas and, and lose form, but it also is very, very difficult for any of the sides to engage. You see, if you have to press this player here and you move it quickly out of this particular area, it means one or two players are going to get drawn potentially into a bad press. So it's a way of moving the ball quickly and preventing too many players from ever being able to get close to the ball and whilst they move up the pitch together. And outside of the boot, a website, Tactical Analysis website, also references this. 
as I'm about to show now. You can see here they call it pass to diffuse pressure and the quick exchange short passes between Napoli's players don't look anything on the surf in Napoli to advance up the pitch together collectively while the opposition could only press here with one or two players losing and breaking shape and if they did it would leave potential passing lanes open elsewhere for penetration between the lines. You can see here it looks pretty needless but if the ball's continually moving how can the striker go and press two players in isolation in that little clip that was shown there. You can see four players against two in the second line in here. Just playing it in, drawing and inviting pressure. Yeah, there you can see a couple of players starting to get drawn to the press and now it creates a little bit of space out wide. Another feature of Napoli's play is to use the, the passive side fullback, the non-ball side fullback if you like, as kind of a, in a half and half position, almost in the back line creating a back three but can step to become active and when this occurs the other fullback will naturally fall back into line. So we can see a little bit of passing to attract perhaps a bad press. Moving the ball very quickly, a lot of one and two touch, and you can see the full back starting to open up. And you can see the left back in frame at the top of your screen starting to look to come back into a more neutral position if the ball goes down this right hand side. I'll just let the footage roll on, and eventually, again, you'll see that advantage of having a full back who sort of plays in that half and half position, allowing for switches of play and potential for drawing players into a bad press. So you can see here lots of little one and two play, and here. Look how the, the horizontal compactness is going to be challenged because he's in that half and half position, almost a V-light shape. This Cagliari, sort of left winger, left-sided central midfielder in here, has got a press from 20 to 25 yards away. So there's potential here if they can get in behind him to create little 2v1s, find the spare player and hopefully, you know, break the press. I think here you can get a full flavour of pretty much all the things that I've discussed so far. So here they're going to build up, like I said, they don't mind building up two for two because the two centre-backs, they back them to be able to play between the lines and with the goalkeeper. Um, and what that is, they want the midfielders to just play in behind the first line of pressing. They want to draw the, and give those second line pressers a huge problem between the lines. So they don't often ask the, the central midfielders to drop into the same line as the centre-backs like many other sides do. And this is again relates to the blind side of movements, where from the blind side they can move into space just around the sides like Hamsik there picking up the ball. You can see half space occupation from the striker, just compacts the two midfielders and allows for space down the sides and it's all cleverly constructed. And there's a nice change of tempo of passing in that final third. And again, I think you'll see, if you look for it here, look for the details, look for any blindside movements. Okay, look for the one and two touch play, the passing to attract, the switch of play, the positioning of the fullbacks. It's all here within this passage of play. And it makes Napoli incredibly difficult to get the ball off of. And you can see here, they just keep the ball effortlessly almost. Uh, and there's not a great deal Cagliari can do about it because they're able to just, like I said, play fast at a nice tempo. A little bit isolated here in possession. So there's a little bit of an argument that they could have perhaps work on their shape and their positional play. But lots of little one and two touch play. And eventually when they are forced back, like in this situation, you can see the superiority within that first line and the ability to switch. And they'll still find the 2v1. So you can see here Hamsik dropping in, creating that superiority of two versus one. Fast little one touch play, third man running. It's absolutely beautiful football. So, I hope you enjoyed watching that video that I've done on Napoli's build-up play. I hope it's given you a few ideas that you can take away and perhaps maybe use yourself. Again, leave any comments in below if you do try any of these sort of principles and concepts and have success or failure with it. It's all part of the sharing and learning process. If you've got any feedback ideas for any future videos to make, again, leave them in the comments below and don't forget to like and share. Thank you very much for watching.